Welcome to The Joey Show. It's Joey Avery. As you can see, I am reporting live outside one of Diddy's mansions, which is currently being raided. We have a news story for you. We will get back to that at the top of the hour. But first, my interview with Mike Cannon of the Chrissy Chaos Podcast. Thank God I have a podcast. I mean, wouldn't it? I can't imagine it. Like it, when I walked past, I was like, "This is a parody pairing." Right? Yeah, like, this is a joke. Yeah, that is uh, that is unbelievable. I in San Francisco. Have you ever done Cobbs? No. no. Oh, Cobbs. So right, I like came up through San Francisco, mm-hmm. and so spent a lot of time at Cobbs. Right across the street from there is a Irish restaurant slash Indian place, and both are done well. Like nice. the Indian side of the place is run by Indian people, and then the Irish side is just like drunks. But it is technically one place. Oh shit! And it's incredible. That's so you'll a- go and like get like curry and like a Guinness. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I can barely yeah. see you through this arm. Yeah, get that there thing. We go. Yeah, get that now thing I'm dialed good. in. Okay. Now I'm good. Yes. I these I like these, but they're really. Maybe I should. Maybe next time I'll start them on this side, and then that yeah. would be easier. And then we're open okay. to each other. I'm learning. It's yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized I was fighting to see yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I was like, hmm, do I say anything or just continue? Yeah, to it's like ahead. when there's like a big, beautiful vase in the middle of a dinner table and you're like, it's nice, but I kind of would like to see the guests. Dude, that remind I the one of the first college gigs I ever did that I had no business doing. I was like nine months into comedy. Yeah. My my community college asked me to perform at an alumni event and I was like absolutely yeah they're like what do you charge i was like 800 they were like we'll give you one and, I was <laughs> and like, you're like deal That's deal the most money i've ever made <laughs> yeah. in my entire life let's go uh i and then i did the show and it's in one of those banquets the stage is a dance floor that's like 40 by 30 all the tables are spread out and in the middle is a like <laughs> 10 foot by 12 foot floral display <laughs> just completely blocked the entire vision of all the audience I ate complete shit for 20 minutes, bombing in front of my ex-coach. Yep. Like, all yeah. these people that are like, so you're doing comedy. Like, we never saw that. Oh, okay. <laughs> I love how early on when you get a gig, you're like, holy shit, we're doing yeah. bit. We're wheeling and dealing. Like, this is a huge thing. Like, this is business. Yeah. And it's always the worst. And it's always in front of people who know you intimately well. And, of course, I'm so green that I just bomb. Right. The whole thing is blocking. I'm eating shit. I'm looking people in the eyes. They're disappointed. Yeah. The headliner goes up, uh, and he, Russ, fuck, I forget his name, but he's really, Ross Bennett, really funny guy, veteran comedian, Yeah, goes up, immediately goes, get that floral display the fuck out of here. And then does, like, well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Crushes. <laughs> annihilate. Like, the whole crowd is like, why would that be there in the first place? Anybody that Everyone didn't Everyone gets on the same. Yeah. 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 It's like, why would that? Imagine doing a whole set without bringing that up. You'd have to be a real. <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah. Just so further humiliated. Yeah. And it's all because I didn't say anything. What do you so do? What did you do after that? So, because then, mm-hmm. then you're confronted with the, do I stick around for the hang? Yeah. And I sure did. I don't know <laughs> yeah. why. I did, and I drank a lot, is what I yeah. did. So at that point, I was drinking pretty competitively. Mm-hmm. And uh, so in those moments where it was free especially, I was like, let's see what I can get out of this. And you're like, like that's yeah. how you're making money in comedy at that For time. Sure. You're like, free drinks is the most advantageous thing that I have. Yeah, and yeah. I think if I do well socially, like in those times, I don't know if you felt like this, but almost if you did fine at the show and then you hung out with everybody after and then you did well socially, you'd be like, I kind of killed. Tonight. I crushed yeah. and you drink <laughs> enough that you're like, everyone loves me and stuff's awesome. And you're like, that went great. And then you wake up the yeah. next morning and you're like, none of that went great. I yep. should have left. <laughs> <laughs> yep. When did you stop drinking? Uh, five years ago when my wife was pregnant. Oh, OK. Yeah, so you yeah. did it out of solid there. So are you a good dude? I guess that's a good I, dude move. I, yeah, either that or just yeah. I mean, I think the writing was on the wall. You're like, yeah, I of... passed a kidney stone through my urethra the same day she <laughs> gave birth. I really wanted to be there with her the whole time. <laughs> yeah, truly, <laughs> I mean, that was like I was I was at the point where I was dealing so poorly with hangovers that I was like getting the airplane bottles and like drinking vodka sodas with like a splash of lemonade just to just to even out. Yeah, you know. So yeah, it was like yeah, it was yeah. it was fun, but. 
<laughs> yeah, we're, we're getting, getting a little point. babies it, on the way, and you're having a nip in the morning. Exactly. <laughs> it's not so work. literally, the moment my wife told me, I was like, "I'll I'll stop." I was like, "At least for the pregnancy, I'll stop," because yeah. I knew I needed at least an extended break. And she's like, "Well, we're going to New Orleans in like two weeks." And I was like, "I will stop after that." Yeah. And then so I drank myself basically like out of it. Like, I, I got myself so hungover and fucked up that weekend. You were like, I don't ever want to feel like this again. I'm good. And so you, <laughs> I'm good. That's dude. actually really good advice. Like, if yeah. you think you might be struggling with addiction, lean in. <laughs> yeah, dive go in as, head first. Go as far down the rabbit hole as you mm -hmm. can. Once See if you, you could stare the devil right in the <laughs> yeah. face. Yeah, that is interesting. Like, if you take a certain amount of psychedelics, people say you can see God. If you get a certain level of hangover you can see satan that's right yes you I, can I manifest actually, your own anxiety and depression and all manner of <laughs> i don't think that's wrong yeah I, I feel like hangovers especially like yeah. the next day i would truly that's when all suicidal ideation yes anxiety spikes like just truly feeling like i was going to leap out of my body yeah that i couldn't even i couldn't handle it like it was those feelings where i was like well i'll benefit from a break at the very least right <laughs> and then you get addicted to sobriety and you're like yeah. this is a new drug that's kind of cool yeah i got addicted a little bit to a jawline i love weed with no yeah. alcohol like at the time i was doing both so i was sleeping at the bar a lot yeah <laughs> like I'm, I'm just I'm familiar i pulled that yeah, yeah. Propped <laughs> at the bar constantly my wife just being like you know Hoping at some point this turns around. Yeah. Yeah. And she wrote it and it did. Wow. I and know. does she drink? She does on occasion, but, but right it's now. still. Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 You have to, you, you have to be become a pro to deal with hangovers at a certain level. I remember I used to go to Coachella every year. No so shit. like I started kind of knowing there's going to be like a four day period after that yeah. where I'm just going to have to white knuckle my life. Yeah. And just be like, I'm going to. Uh, hate myself. I'm going to think everyone hates me. Uh, I'm going to be unproductive at work, but I just have to know mm -hmm. that I get through that three day period. I'll be back to normal again. Yeah, and the three sun. days of Coachella were so fun right. that eight years in a row, no regrets. I was like, that's just the price you pay, dog. <laughs> you want to be Did out you prep there? supplements for the way out? Did you do five HTP or anything Sh like yeah, that? Sure. Yeah. 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 yeah I did. Yeah, I did. I did. <laughs> right. I used to think if that there that was worked. an actual scientific solution mm -hmm. that could deal with the crater of happiness that you create when you do three straight days of high level yeah. drinking and drug use unapologetically yeah. you'd be a very rich scientist but yeah i had i had a friend we had the perfect the party friend who's like not only do i have all the supplies i also brought all the pre-supplies and post supplies like in bags like eight different yeah. pills of all sorts of rhino cum and whatever you, you think is gonna make <laughs> yeah, you feel need better a festival shaman yes somebody with a tackle box 100%. Something drugs. breaks. She's like, I have electrical tape. You're like, that's amazing because <laughs> I didn't bring a water bottle. So thank you. <laughs> like, <laughs> There are two I... types of festival person. There is the yeah. guy who plans for it six months out of the year, mm -hmm. has intense anxiety, full car, has everything, plans for everything. And I knew that guy. And I also knew a guy who we were supposed to stay in a house the first Coachella. He got there and thought the campsite was so fun. He never came back to the house. So he did the full three days with no shirt, just shoes and shorts, three full days, 72 hours. I love that. Lord of the flies. Yeah. And yeah. you're always like, that guy's crazy. And then I like ask my friend like, Oh, what's he doing now? And he's like, Oh, he makes more money than anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Any one of us all put together. He runs like a financial, some giant. Was he solo? He was yeah. just alone? Yeah, this dude, Alan, he came with our friends. We, I, we met him night one. I was like, that guy's great. We didn't see him for three days. Holy he just shit. found people at the campsite. He made... found himself, dude. Yeah. That's yeah. fucking awesome. That was kind of my bachelor party, but it was a, a bunch of us. So we went to Lake George and we spent one night in a hotel, one of the town hotels, and went bar hopping. Yeah. Just, you know. Seeing yeah. the local flavor yeah. of upstate New York. Mm. Just What's that flavor hippos. like? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was July. Bit too. musky. It was, it was yeah. a rough week. I don't know what was going on. But uh, then we did this thing called Log Bay Day, which they don't have anymore. And my year, my bachelor party was actually the last year. Because they, I think a boat like left and then ran over a child. They do be doing that. They do be Boats doing Boats actually that. have quite a track record. Well, there's like cops everywhere, but there's no way to like truly enforce 
DUIs on that magnitude because all the boats park in this one area, link up, and it's a you know crazy ass party. And everyone just kind of assumes like we have a very as a society a very different approach to boating drunk, which yes. is kind of like oh that's called not being a pussy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> boating, you're you driving anyway? a boat sober it was <laughs> fucking Christopher Columbus over here. That's insane. <laughs> He was shit faced. Yeah, that is actually. I true. guarantee he yeah, was shit faced. Yeah, they had <laughs> barrels of wine. Yeah. <laughs> Would have been like, I'm not gonna Yeah, no. I was like, it sounds kind of fun. And then I was like, you know, I don't know if I want to be the white guy who's like, you know when I would have liked to have lived? Columbus era. <laughs> yeah, when you could be now on that a was ship. now that was boating. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the stink. You the thought stink. going to Hawaii was fun now. Imagine thinking you owned all of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, that would be kind of a fun confidence to have, though, is that ignorance of just showing up places and been like, look at mine. Yeah. Look just going like, dude, India's great. And yeah. they're like, this isn't India. He's like, shut up, Indian. <laughs> That's an irrational confidence move. Dude. Yeah, I love that. They're like, we're not. And he's like, I'll, I'll bet your hand you are. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, Jesus Christ, dude. It's kind of the original Trump, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, metaphor. Trump is definitely sure. like a modern day mm -hmm. Columbus vibes. I don't even think people who like him would be offended by that. They'd no. be like, we need to bring that shit back. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. Well, Columbus is, uh, they're pushing him out, the woke. That's right. As you know. Yeah. The so Italians don't like what, what we've that. done to Columbus. My wife is heavy Italian. We can't let that happen. Nice. Dude. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of, like, what always pissed me off is when I had a day job, like, at first we got Columbus Day off. But then they were like, yo, this is fucked up. Mm -hmm. We can't have it off. And I'm like, who didn't want the day off? Right. Like right. now we have to work. So my wife's company went full like they caught it and then flipped it to indigenous people's day. Sure. But just gave you the day off still. Yeah. And I was like, that's good. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Whatever's going to get us off. Of, like, you know, all yeah. off of. Work, I, but I got distracted. So you wait. So your bachelor like, party. Off, us off of work. You know, yeah. us common folk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do kind of miss now that I am full time comedy, like the day job vibe of dude, it's a three day weekend mm -hmm. and you actually feel like that day's off instead yeah. of like, I'm only feeling myself. The feeling of that. I, I, I miss like, you know, the the it's a the day hope off. Of Let's fucking sure. just drink in the morning because fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the anger I had in that office. Oh, not, yeah, did, yeah. The memories of that still haunt me. I have bats flopping like flying around in my head just from what that did you time. do? I was an office manager and then I was an IT guy, but I didn't know computers. <laughs> I let did I it they Columbus you. They looked at you and they said. Indian. <laughs> I was like, you're goddamn right. I mean, I kind of called myself an Indian, and they were like, Indian. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I, well, I interviewed for this job, and the only reason I knew about it was my buddy's mom was like in accounts or something like that. And so I thought it was just for an office manager position, but it was for IT as well. And they were like, so you're a Mac specialist? And I was like, all my life. All day, baby. <laughs> every day. Yeah. I literally had never owned, operated, or anything. Like, I think I went on the internet on my sister's MacBook once at that point. And I said that, and they gave me no proficiency exam. That's, I mean, that I'm is, sure that was great right up until the work started rolling in. <laughs> yeah, like, dude. you would turn that thing on and off? <laughs> well, it was great. I mean, I just Googled it. It's everywhere. It, all that all that shit is on Google. Like, <laughs> I was. It's true. I truly just act busy the whole time. Yeah. Like, it was a Costanza method, truly. Like, just like furious and frustrated and yeah. all that stuff. Tell somebody to either unplug it or restart it. I'd Google what the fuck they just said and then go back. It didn't. It also didn't hurt that like everybody else is a functioning. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Barely functioning. I mean, I had a woman walk in with her laptop open, and there was red Gatorade spilling over the side of it. <laughs> and she goes, "I think that update you installed broke my computer." <laughs> I was like, "I bet like, that's yeah, the one. That's for sure it." It's like an actual Gatorade commercial. The yeah. computer's sweating. Yeah. The red Gatorade. Out. <laughs> was it I'm Snow like, Leopard? Yeah. Snow Leopard did that. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah dude I I'll never forget the there was a feeling of immense and thick 
like painful tiredness yeah. that would just happen most days mm-hmm. based on the like amount of ennui and general hate that I had for my entire life <laughs> as my soul was getting crushed. Yeah. But I still, now that I'm doing this, all I remember is that like, well, but man, when you got a Monday off, <laughs> shit. Yeah, the romance. You felt free for real. <laughs> Dude, it's like breaking up with a chick. Yeah. All you do is like, remember the good times. Yes. That's it. You can't even remember why you broke up in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> so, w- so, did we finish your bachelor party story? I don't so even you're know. Up in, you're up in oh, this so town. We, oh, yeah. so yeah, we did that. And then we camped, me and like 16 dudes on two campsites on Lake George in this island before we even went to Log Bay. Half of my friends, like I'm in my 30s at that point. I got married later uh, compared, compared to my friends. Yes. Uh, but like, you know, they're like, what the fuck, dude? We've like graduated beyond sleeping in dirt and on roots. Right. <laughs> let's right. not do this. But I was like, no, man, let's We're become part one of the fucking nature. land, dude. <laughs> it's just 16 gorillas <laughs> doing mushrooms oh, on an island in Lake George, God. like hooting and hollering, people calling the, you know, there's cop boats coming at all hours. Just yeah. Like, Guys, we're going to. We're going to force you to leave in the morning. We almost sunk our pontoon boat 10 minutes into <laughs> renting it. We forgot that there's like weight displacement. We put just four juice heads in the front with the kegs. Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> Didn't consider it at all. My friend floors it. It titanics immediately. <laughs> dips fully submerged halfway up. My friend uh, Tim had like a hurt back and he like immediately snapped it back into place. My friend Anthony's phone flew in. And that was a whole goddamn thing. <laughs> Why is it? It's always the worst shit. That's the fun thing to I talk know. about. You know? know, it's like, like, obviously, yes, it's objectively better to like, as your life goes on, you get your shit together and you don't cause a mess yeah, and you're yeah, not yeah. being dangerous, but that's not a fun thing to discuss not at, at all. all. No, I'm, that's the thing is like, I'm thankful. Thank God. I haven't been just like sober my entire life. Right. You know, I had yeah, my, just, yeah. Tell me about the spreadsheet you knocked out, dude. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't know what to. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I used to uh, take Adderall and just really be a good it guy. Sometimes, yeah. You yeah. Know? That is dude. Tight. So I went into that job, not knowing anything. And then I, by the end of it, I mean, I still knew nothing, but I was networking like international offices international. <laughs> I don't know why I said, I don't know. International. <laughs> international. Dude, that's unreal. Do you uh sorry, my I I had do you know who Davis Clark is? Spreadsheets came up and being being efficient came up. Owen, do you know who this is? You know who it is. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So do you know who Tony P is? No. Oh man, okay, this is interesting. There's this new subset of influencer that has taken Instagram by storm. Okay. Which is kind I'm trying to get off. That's why. Maybe that's my that's You why. just quit everything, dude. I'm, dude I'm I mean, what to, the fuck? Well, because everything makes me want to kill myself. Right, right. <laughs> it's yeah, drinking that Instagram. It does what make sense. I <laughs> I need to be better about that. Whenever people do like stuff that I realize I'm doing that isn't great, my first thought is like, oh fuck you. You think you're better than me? <laughs> no. What are you writing the book? No, Fucking man. Shakespeare over here? Dude, you thrive. can't just scroll Instagram and jerk off like the fellas. <laughs> <laughs> I really like your stuff. I, I I love how you've figured out exactly what you want to put out. The like your your whole thing. Like I love it. Dude. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank so you. I, but but you seem like you've figured out how to flow with social media and make that and like take the knocks and take the compliments and whatever and have it be a game to you. I'm just a pussy. Well, and I just no, can't. that's I just, just... I'm an open asshole, dude. I can't I can't handle it. Yeah, no, I mean, you just think all of that because you only see what I post and you don't right. see the fucking hellhole that creates it or that Fair it enough. creates in me. I, Dude, I literally have, I'm so like, because I, I like film all my sets, I go through all of them. I'm so like insecure about what is and isn't going to work that mm. I have, uh, I will send like 10 clips at a time to like seven different friends, like some people in my management, some people who aren't even in comedy. I have like a ranking system so I can get them to devise what they think might do well versus yeah. not yeah. so that I can just look back and be like, ooh, people like this one or did it and like this is worth a shot. That's amazing. Yeah, so I do all <laughs> – it's it's like way – Do you know what's cool though is that your brain – like I don't operate like that at all. My brain can't even function yeah. in, in that type of organization. But like your brain is like a new type of brain to comedy. 
Oh. Because comedy keeps tr- it keeps evolving, and it, it's been it does, you know yeah. it's filtered through different types of people throughout the you know throughout it being an art form, and now that type of analytical brain that's interesting. Yeah, and it's not. I, don't, I never like considered myself good at that. It just like what I realized is. You know, you do a headlining week and it's five hours of video and yeah. it's and I, you know, I'm working on the joke. So I'm really trying to only put out the crowd work. But by the time I've been editing myself for five hours and I have like 20 different possible clips, yeah. I'm like my brain has melted to like an unrecognizable state <laughs> where I'm like, I, if what I'm putting out is going to be horrible. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, one does well and you're like, great, that's who I am. And then the next one doesn't. And you're like, why does everyone hate me? Right. And will I ever yeah, yeah. make it? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's exactly why I've had to just throw money at it yeah. so I can blame somebody. <laughs> if it doesn't work, I'll be like, all right, well, they didn't know what they were doing. Yeah, but see, that doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, it's all the anxiety of like, if it doesn't work, we're fucked. <laughs> but I have gotten to the point of like, if I do, if I post something and it doesn't go well, I'm just like, ah, that sucks. Well, let's the next one will be good. Like, right, right. Just keep it going. Like, sports yeah, you brain. Rudy yourself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah 100%. <laughs> yeah. My entire life is rooting myself. Yeah. Yeah. Just bouncing back. Well, and now it's so weird because I feel like even with podcasts, it used to be like a consistent like you have. But now because they're kind of in the YouTube algorithm, Mm -hmm. it's like the first two I posted did well. And then the third I posted didn't have as big of a guest and did like one eight hundredth the the other two. And I was like to be cut in half. What the fuck, dude? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and so then what, whenever what I always come back to after thinking through all that is like, yeah, playing the results end of the game is just always going to feel like shit. Yeah. yeah. And if instead you're just like, what do I want to create and yeah. just do that, then yeah. it doesn't mean it'll be successful. But like if you can fall back to that, you're like, OK, let's just stop worrying about shit we can't control and like do. Right. What would you, you know. like to do? Would you like to be in Marvel? Because I feel like you could <laughs> you could just like lean out and just become some sort of. I, w- I mean, I would Something. love to look. I'd love to be rich, and I would love. Uh, I would love for the for uh, Hollywood to pump me full of like weird chemicals oh. and just like make me fucking jack. My like, dream. Like I don't want to be in. I don't even watch Marvel, but I would love for them to just Kumail Nanjiani my yes, fucking abs, yes. dude. Like all I want is pay a me reason. to be jacked, yeah. dude. Like that's what I would love to do. Uh, acting, I could give a have. shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just get, get me on a get me on a magazine and just, yeah. I need to have that Hollywood guy who just comes in and just slaps the beer out of my hand and is oh. like we're going all oh, fine we gotta Dude. go to the my early goal was to like book something the, either as a fighter or a basketball so I would have to get into like crazy yeah. shape not realizing I should probably be in that you crazy just, shape yeah, that's usually the how part. they book you I was like, yeah. no, they'll see beyond that they'll, they'll see. see beyond my pudgy exterior and alcoholism and be like, that guy probably is a is a hooper. There is. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, finally, I can focus on my game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there is a part of I think there's a whole part of the Hollywood story. And especially when Hollywood did feel like it made people where you just thought, like, if I just do comedy long enough, one day I'll I'll be there. I'll and some dude will be in the back of a smoke filled room and oh, yeah. be like, I'm going to make this kid a fucking star. <laughs> like, <laughs> when I first did my first open mic in LA, I was mm-hmm. like, if they see me at this bro, yeah. shit could change, you know? And then I like bombed for two minutes at the comedy store and like left crying. And I was like, well, th- hopefully my manager wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> your first ever, your first, uh, you started in LA? No, no. But the first time I went to LA, I was probably like already like five years, six years in. Yeah, I was yeah. like, once I get to LA, it's really going Taking down. Over. You hear the Dane story of him at Dublin's. He does seven minutes and all of a sudden he's like headlining theaters. Is that what happened? <laughs> I think so. It's something oh my crazy. God. Like so I I forget if that was a that was like a plot point of one of the episodes of Torgasm and how and yeah. how he met Jay Davis. And like uh, Jay was hosting that show, and I think it was like such a crazy thing that he gained like instant. It, heat in the town that's which is crazy mm-hmm. like ha- that stuff still can happen sure, but it's yeah. just like it's a lot more like you can control your own thing you might not be a rocket ship i think we're both like a yeah, slow yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, as long nice. as we're going this way Steady, dude baby. just keep, keep it going keep pushing the car yeah i don't really hill. care to be i mean i would take any large opportunity but like in yeah, general yeah. all i would really like is for people to enjoy the podcasts i do and come to my shows and that's that that would be plenty for me yeah, i just yeah. as long as the you know the the, the numbers and sales like go <laughs> up that would be yeah great. totally yeah yeah um, I, w- I wasn't sure i wasn't sure if you're like an actor like or you wanted to do anything i think i 
feel like I could easily be an actor, but I haven't really given <laughs> it a world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel like I can read and talk. And I and I know that that's very dismissive of a sure. very challenging art form and probably not helpful to say out loud on a public platform. Although, as we discussed with you as my guest, it won't be that no, public. It's all good. You might as well put that uh, put that broken link on. Yeah. It. <laughs> But yeah, I think I could, I think I'd be I'd like any comic. I could I could act well in a limited range of roles. Like mm-hmm. I don't think I'd be an effective like civil war like soldier, <laughs> you know, like eating hardtack and writing to Mima. But like, you yeah. know, like you'd I, have to lose I could substantial do, I could, weight for that. Yeah. Like like an 80 pound gaunt Christian Bale. Yeah. Kind of now. Yeah. yeah. That would but be too if much. you want like a kind of douchey bro uh friend character that you find out isn't that bad of a guy in the end, you know. I got you, dog. <laughs> Dude, that is perfect. Yeah. It's a shame they don't make that movie anymore. Yeah, please bring it back. I yeah. Think, I think people can bring it back. back. I think it will. Yeah, I think people is... are like wanting it to happen. Yeah. You but gotta just, just write it. Yeah, that's what I'll do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll just write the I'll just write the feature. I'm such a good script writer. Yeah. The amount of things that we have to figure out how to do. It's... Like, cause I write a ton of like sketch stuff sure. and and i i do a ton of writing but it's like you know i do think it's dismissive of me to assume that like i could just put together like a perfect like three act structure great thing of it's course. Like, no, i want to get big enough that they give me the guy who knows how to write that <laughs> you know? yeah yeah well they assume you've been like studying you know how to write scripts or whatever i, yeah, I, I listened to one of those uh audiobooks yeah yeah no and, i have two yeah but i remember my first even writer's packet i, I submitted for uh the nikki and sarah late night show uh-huh it was nikki glazer and sarah schaefer they had an mtv show um and i submitted for it and i submitted it to my manager at first and she goes what is this and i go i don't know yeah I was like, I've never done this. Nobody gave me an example. Yeah. You said, give me a writer's packet. I literally, I just wrote a couple things. I, I have done so many like embarrassing things over the course of my career that won't really come up because yeah, I like fired off a shitty packet to some person who was like, maybe I'll work with you and never heard from him again. And I'm just like, no, no one remembers that. Right? If anything, you're cemented as a dog shit loser in yeah, their brain. A hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. That is, that is you just gotta, you just gotta keep it moving. <laughs> keep Move it on. Moving. Someone at that agency yeah. knows I'm a fraud. Keep it moving. Hoping, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, hoping it's a war of attrition. You yeah. outlast them. All right. They, I, they lost faith in the business. They're I out. genuinely believe. And that's why like I do. I am not like a super like grind success influencer guy, but there's some part of them that occupies a helpful space in my brain where it's like, I bet I could outwork most comics. Sure. I truly, that's where I'm like the long game. (laughs) Just, you know, don't die for a while and outwork people over a long period of time. I think that, yep. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, exactly. 100%. I have that. I mean, you know, I've uh, I've taken enough mushrooms to kind of also shatter that as well and think low of myself. (laughs) But I still am the delusion push pull. Yeah. That is more heavy than the self doubt. Have you sure. ever had the mushroom experience where it's like, I am God, all of this is together? Yes. God, maybe not, but like part of part, part of, of the conscious. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's what you realize. Yeah. yeah we know yeah. that. Come yeah. on. No, but you know had- a couple of times you realize we're all part of the same Godhead. <laughs> but uh, my that. friend thought he was Jesus for a little while. That's not good. No. He yeah, came you back, can't though, so that's take great. the like. The, if your ego melts and then reforms yeah. you as the most important thing, yeah, it was an you, unsuccessful. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can't do that. That would be, I. but there is part of me that's jealous because they're back. Yeah. Part of me is jealous that like, I wish I had that experience, that actual pure uncut cocaine belief in yourself. Yeah, th- you said something right at the beginning that we said. I wish I had it because they're back. So they, so they became Jesus, and now they've returned to yeah, as, as, being you know, just a normal. Chill. Like, oh shit, I'm just <laughs> yeah. Seth again. <laughs> Turns out, <laughs> yeah, not JC. Yeah. What? Okay. So when they thought they were Jesus, yeah, it was what, mostly during the trip. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes. It wasn't like it. Didn't it wasn't. It wasn't like that, that was no. like what he's doing for like no, three no. weeks. No, no. Even that, like. But even that 
brief of a time. Yeah. I would love that glimmer of just like, I am all powerful. That'd be cool. Yeah. I had some great experiences with that, like in college. And I think I really annoyed the people that I was around after. Cause I was like, guys, you don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> You don't fucking get it. Yeah. We're all part of the same thing. I know. Religion is right, but they explained it wrong. But, you know, <laughs> you know like <laughs> metaphorically, it's there. But now, like, yeah, now when I take them, I'm just like, I feel a little uncomfortable at this bar. You know, and well, I, that's why, because it's become so social. It's become not what it was supposed. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I've, I'm trying to not. People are doing it like key bumps, dude. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And Which it's is interesting. probably better for I, you than key bumps. For sure. And it's better than booze, I guess. Some people are substituting. Yeah, although the problem some is I'm usually joining. adding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I take more merging. of an additive approach. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like Zool and the Gatekeeper coming yeah. together, and you're just like, well, I've unleashed <laughs> hell. Well, because when you're boozing, like, it'll take the edge off. Yeah. Ideally, you're yes. like, oh, I'm a little uncomfortable, and yeah, you yeah. have some drinks, and you'd start making other people uncomfortable yeah. instead. <laughs> <laughs> that used to be my favorite way to come down from mushrooms is as soon as I felt like I was rejoining society yeah. then have a couple beers. Dude, it was the best. I yeah. remember one of my favorite ones. We finally like we we'd had a we'd gone to realms, we'd learned things, we'd lived, we died, we'd had the whole experience and then all of a sudden you come back and you're like, oh, "I'm back." Yeah. And then we made Pim's cups with like all the produce in the world. It was like fucking blackberries and blueberries. It was like a whole fucking cucumber and like a celery and like this like full garden of Eden that was also <laughs> getting us fucked up. And I was like, this is the best experience of my that entire life. Fantastic. <laughs> it's it like great. the food scene in Hook. Yeah. And you're like, oh <laughs> yeah. my God. Yeah, dude. <laughs> it's beautiful. It was great. Um, did you start out here in New York? I did, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend that. Yeah. Yeah, it was hard. I mean, I I also, I started at mostly Broadway Comedy Club. Uh -huh. So I was there for almost like two, two into three years of comedy and then finally got banned uh, as everybody almost did at that time. For what? Just for various non-discrepancies that became things with, you know, a certain manager or whatever. What do you mean by that? <laughs> <laughs> the way the way just I got just slightly banned. clarified. Sure. Just, yeah. So the, you're not I, allowed to touch the ladies anymore, <laughs> I guess. Oh yeah, I guess. It, it, I guess actually, in an effort to exonerate me and yes. not sound creepy, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So so yeah, no, we would. I did everything for that club in terms of like passed out flyers. So I barked in Times Square. I answered phones. I sat people all for the stage time because I was getting up seven nights a week, multiple times a night, and it was awesome. But with that, they thought I had some sort of exclusivity without even saying it. And I I was, was friends with Stefano, Chris Stefano at yeah. the time, too. And him and I started there at the same time. He immediately started elevating and he headlined Caroline's as part of their breakout artist series. It was like when yeah. Young Comics basically did a bringer show at Caroline's. But he, he got it. It was exciting. I opened for him and because I opened for him and like created a Facebook event, they banned both of us. <laughs> it was bizarre. The craziest shit ever is I clubs know. assuming that they're the only place you perform and you're like, do you know? <laughs> Surely there are enough comedy podcasts that exist that you yeah. know how this usually works. I mean, that, well, I think in, you made the right choice considering of uh, now you do Chrissy Chaos <laughs> yeah, with yeah, him yeah, and yeah, I imagine yeah. you don't need to go to Broadway Comedy Club. <laughs> so I mean, much. I still do on occasion. I yeah. they've they've welcomed me back <laughs> since. Thank God. I've done it. I've yeah. done a handful of times. They're still, uh, you know, R.I.P. Al Martin. He just passed. I don't want to uh, speak ill of the dead. Yes, yes. Rip yeah. the Al. I didn't know him, but yeah, yeah. It was like, you know, shit. no, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, him dying is almost like the vampire that bit you dying. You know what I mean? He kind of he's the kind of the guy that made me a vampire. <laughs> nice, and now dude. I have to go out there and make more vampires. Now you have yeah. to. Yeah. <laughs> so when did you start uh, being on Chrissy Chaos full time? Uh, like November, I guess. November, what what December. led to that? Um, well, so what led to, I was, uh, I was actually going to work for Barstool. I had uh -huh. a job pending an offer that I accepted. It was going to be a whole thing that they were opening for the New York thing. Yeah. Uh, like comedy. And, uh, I had a poker show with them podcast, potential special, like all this stuff. Uh, Dave bought the company back after like six months of negotiation and about to sign on the dot. And then he bought it back and it just like kind of went away. I, <laughs> That's what made it go away. Yeah, so under yeah. Penn, they were more likely to bring you on as a comic. 
I think so. So because it was like, I think just creatively, he differed from the vision. Right. So I, so I think it, that, that whole thing. So got he was wiped. more like, let's get back to what we've always done. Yeah, whereas yeah. Penn was like, let's put our stamp more in the comedy space. Exactly. Yeah. There were, and especially I think like Kevin was more the figurehead of New York at least. And then Dave came back into the fold. And then, and then Dave is Dave. And exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I yeah. mean, I'm not like. It sucked at the yeah. time. It was like a lost opportunity, obviously. Planned a big thing, you know, planned like a launch on it. I had all this creative. It's like your entire like next five years plan truly, was. Truly. So that was like, that was tough. But then when that broke up, Chris, I guess, was coming to a head with things because he was, you know, it's heavy lifting to do a solo pod and then the same and then a it's pod true. with Sal as well. Yeah. So he was either going to like, I don't know, either cut it down, stop or whatever. And instead he brought me on and we've just been doing it. Since. Which is so fun. Like obviously guest driven shows are popular and super fun, but yeah, like yeah. when you can just like chat with the homie, it's fun. It's, it's more best. fun to do. Dude, it's so fun. Cause you know, you have rapport and 100%. you're like, okay, we can just talk about new stuff. We don't yeah. have to like figure out like how to tailor this conversation <laughs> to. Yeah. What, yeah. I, which, as you can tell, I didn't really do today because I was like, Mike and I will just be good, dude. <laughs> <laughs> there, is, there is no chance that this was going to be like a... So your parents. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, now it's like... So we started because I came on and there was all these guests booked. I just came on and it was like that. So I was on with all these like huge comedian yeah that totally know chris and are like who is this dude? yeah <laughs> you're like, i'm part of the show yeah. uh <laughs> so that was my hollywood humiliation ritual uh i went through that you know completely cut off my own dick and then uh, yeah no and then since then we've actually we started the year with just a run of just us and then i'm sure eventually we'll have some people on as moving well, back but like, in but it's good to like establish like yeah, this yeah. is the crew and exactly. then having people back yeah on. we got to build up the characters of the show yeah so stuff. once the barstool thing didn't work out you were just like hey i'm I'm kind of fucked and he was kind of like honestly i'm getting burned out so let's like i you know what i didn't i never mentioned it to him but i mean i mentioned the fact that like the deal fell through and whatever right and i was touring and then i i think i had open for him on a couple theaters and stuff like that and we were having a great time on the patreon and doing just you know yeah fun stuff and so and i was guesting a lot too and then so he was like he i didn't even mention it I, because i've never wanted to ask anybody for anything or put right. my friend in that kind of position especially like He's successful. He's doing his own thing. I'm not trying to get it. I'm not trying to fucking, you know, yeah. I don't know. I have a thing with that. Whatever. I think it's a good thing to have yeah. instead of just like assuming that because one of your friends is successful, you're entitled to a part of that. Right. No, of but course. But when you find, but when they find themselves in a situation where you're like, I can be a value because you yeah, guys yeah. started off together. Who's going to have that same kind of rapport? Totally. You know? Totally. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, you know, it. I was already more than satisfied with my recurring guest status and being yes. like, hey, man, it's cool this that you're good. exposing <laughs> me to your fan base. Yeah. This is uh, even better. But yeah, he just, I guess, was like at that point was like, hey, would you like to do this? And I was like, a hundred percent. Yeah. 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 It's oh, additive I'm to absolutely bit, you everything. You know what? Yeah. I'm yeah. going to go ahead and do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it turns yeah. out I do have time. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, now he's producing my special. So Chris is Barstool. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, yeah. He's now my Barstool. He's my dad. When, when are you cool. taping your special? April 6th in Stamford at a New York okay, Comedy Club. Okay, April, so it's March, so you're nervous already. I, I feel actually I'm in the delusional good phase. Oh, nice. The, yeah, yeah. No, I'm in the pocket. That's so nice. a week up or two weeks out. I'll probably get into some frozen syndrome where I forget my act, doubt yeah. it, maybe try new stuff. Like it's like, you know, that yeah. craze. But then uh, I'll hopefully, hopefully then the tide will turn a third time and then I'll feel I'll, I'll be in high mania again. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> there's no way to avoid. Dude, I was at the cellar with Shane bef like two days before he hosted SNL <laughs> and he was just anxiety. like, he's like, dude, like he's like, this just this just fucking sucks. Like this just like the stress. And I was just like. Man, it's normal. I like who everyone would feel that way. And he's yeah. like, I felt fine yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was like yeah. all good until like two, three days before. And now he's like, oh, this fucking sucks. Dude. I mean, <laughs> like, that, that's true I can't imagine. I, yeah, I, yeah, I don't. Yeah. yeah, I don't. I don't pretend to. It's funny because like he obviously doesn't give a shit what I have to say. But I'm trying to be like, that's normal, bro. <laughs> like, like, I, I, I get I that way SNL. before when I headline in fucking Batavia, <laughs> Illinois. <laughs> I'll be there in May. Yeah. <laughs> I New was stuff. just there. Great crowd. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> New stuff. At least 10% of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> the new jokes tour, but secretly I've been working on this hour for 10 years. I just want you to lower your expectations. <laughs> yeah, I want you to be like, wow, that's like, that's almost that finished. Guy, he's dialed. Yeah, that's halfway I there. I had someone... <laughs> It's crazy to me how many people have misperceptions. Like when I like if I if I'm doing a standard hour, I do some crowd work so I can get clips. I would say it's probably depending on the night, but like 70 percent material, 30 sure. percent crowd work, maybe 75, 25 or yeah, whatever. Someone came up to me after and they were just like, I'm just so impressed at how you can do that whole thing off the top. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what, dude? Yeah. You yeah. thought that whole hour was just just because I. I know how to segue conversation topics back into that like anyone else, but yeah. at least one person in the crowd was like, this guy is fucking good. Isn't it? And dude. he did all, I'm like, first of all, either it's a compliment because you think I'm a genius or it's really rude because you think my writing is fucking ass. <laughs> <laughs> I think it actually speaks to the popularity and spread of comedy to the uninitiated yes so it initially was like everybody thought that initially where they're like this guy's coming up with this off the top of his head holy shit this is the sharpest man i've ever seen then everybody got educated on the fact that it's a right you know you write yeah. you develop you this you that then now comedy has exploded and it's reached people that have never been into stand-up and now they're like neck deep in stand-up and they know terms like punchline and tag and callback and all this shit so they're half educated but not quite and they're yeah. just like man and like, i'm that is crazy i'm blown away by how many comedians are mad at the like i understand that there's some annoying things about the new comedy crowd but i'm yeah. like if there are more people watching comedy that is such a good thing yeah like i mean it'll sweat like the, that's kind of what always happens where it like Things just swell and then recalibrate yeah. to almost, you know, a homeostasis yeah. where you can sustain it and it's yeah. going to be whatever. And then it might swell again. And, you know, it, it, who knows if this is going to continue if content is like forever. <laughs> <laughs> who but, fucking knows? Could you imagine? Well, it's a good question, but. <laughs> but it's like, <laughs> you know. It's a good. Yeah. It's a, <laughs> Nothing wrong with watching and liking clips and sharing them with the friends. No, no, it's <laughs> yeah. the best. I was talking about me. No, 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 I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Hamster wheel of I, never but like, stopping. what is like, what would come after that is the thing is mm -hmm. it's like, like, I, I do think, yes, uh, like literally. constantly putting out <laughs> quick moments that are pretty good. Yeah. Could give way to, I mean, but it hasn't really given way. If you really make an incredible and different and unique, like hour long something, sure. like that still works. Oh, it's I, not yeah. like no, I'm like not. You I have wouldn't. to, but but yeah, it's it's. It, I mean, dude, shit's changing. This is this news literally broke as we were starting, uh, which is interesting to me for a specific reason, which I'll explain. Just for laughs, files for creditor protection says 2024 festival will not take place. Wow. I'm flying to L.A. tomorrow for my JFL audition. <laughs> oh, that sucks. I'm like, that is... I have to, I'm headlining a night out there on Thursday, which is why I did it there. Is it still here. happening? I don't fucking know. Like, because filing for bankruptcy, I mean, well, no, that's what oh, I'm it's saying, not because the I... festival this summer is canceled, it says. That's what I'm saying. So yeah, what is yeah, the so audition for? Damn, dude. Yeah, I'll have to reach out, to my, just a, reach like... out to my manager and see. Well. What... That's for uh, that's for the eight audition six oh, callbacks and never new faces. Up. He just sent it to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, okay. Still happening. Well, this is insane. I don't know if I'd need to cut this. This is such an odd email. Formerly JFL new faces showcase is still happening. Hello, as you may have heard, the Montreal Festival is not taking place this year, and me and my boss have been temporarily laid off. That said, all the shows are still happening <laughs> this week. Great to do five vague, minutes. It's just a vague industry showcase. A vague industry I showcase. I That's not bad, though. That'll no, be, it's not. That'll be worth it. I bet An they'll industry. try to even pump it up more. Okay. Yeah, cool. Guess I'm going clip hunting, doing crowd work. Yeah. <laughs> what do you do for work? <laughs> I'm, I'm the head of Fox. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Nice try, rapist. <laughs> 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 They're like both things can be true. Yeah, <laughs> frequently are. <laughs> Have you been tracking this whole P Diddy thing? I yeah. di I like I feel like it, the news has come across my desk, but I haven't yeah. been able to like dive in. Like I saw 
Usher was with Russell Simmons in like Bangkok. Yeah, that's a weird. And now look, people dude. are like, that's like that's like R. Kelly going to see Michael Jackson <laughs> in the Middle East. Like, what are you doing, <laughs> dude? Like, why would you do that? That might be the one thing that could s- solve Israel Palestine. <laughs> the Art Kelly Michael Jackson concert, <laughs> and it's called "Direct Your Anger at Something New," <laughs> a benefit for Gaza, a benefit for a two-state solution. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I think that's a good idea. Yeah, not bad. I think we one should keep will be that. a hologram, I guess. So is the is the concept that that P Diddy was just like leveraging his power over people and making it but was he making people do gay stuff i don't know if he was making as much as strongly encouraging and sometimes drugging into influence uh, that's mm. a, all of this is a legend i have no yes idea. of course I've, yes I've, I've I'll, I'll make sure my lawyers are on I've top of this. several headlines yes so this is what i've this is what i've picked up and is the idea that he wanted people to do gay things so then he had something over them it's kind of so a, that's apparently one of the accusations that he had like almost an Epstein level of hidden cameras in a honey pot for blackmail. Yeah. <laughs> that's what they said. Which is, so, which is actually, it's crazy that being kind of gay would be as damaging in the black community as just being a full on pedophile in the rich white community. That, oh my god. <laughs> That is very interesting. That's tough. I don't know what the takeaway is there. Poor but... Meek Mill, dude. That guy has not left X. Yeah, no, he is. <laughs> My God. I just love the way pussy smells. Oh, <laughs> that just... was not a Meek Mill impression. No, it what was that was. Cat Williams yeah, and Nick. yeah. <laughs> but him just yeah tweeting, just like I just love it. I love dude, pussy. Cannot stop talking about how much he's not gay and or a rat. Yeah. Yeah. That's so. that's a tough scene, and it, it's possible. I'm sure. I, I, hey, like man, I if, believe. If I, I if believe people, all if men. someone called me that, did you say believe all <laughs> men? <laughs> hey. Believe all potentially gay men. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, that, that's actually. I'm embracing him during I'm, this I'm time. Ally. Speak his truth. I feel like that's an allyship. I'm accepting of whichever is the truth. Right. I hope he feels comfortable sharing whatever the story is. If he was a victim, maybe coerced. Yeah. Or yeah. you know, willing participant. But like, yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't know how to unwind this. I'm like, <laughs> but I'm like, look, there's yeah, no way without. Just I'm like, being you know, for defamation. Yeah, there's, there's no, there's no good <laughs> angle out of this. Where I'm like, but if you weren't gay, you wouldn't get tricked into kissing a guy. It's like, it's not yeah. like it was a girl that was on the brink. Well, I don't want to say that. It's like you don't want to do that. There's no, just don't. No one should have sex. <laughs> Maybe Everyone it was baby's should. First popper. Who knows. Who knows? I feel I'm very grateful that I got married early and have like been like not Same. that I would you know be doing anything, but it's just oh, I don't want to be around. I would have been. Yeah. I would have been taken advantage of in a heartbeat. <laughs> the crazy thing is that it's blackmail. If I was like Usher sucked my dick at P Diddy's party, that'd be the first thing I tweeted. A hundred percent. Yeah, I'd be like, yeah. I'm not gay, but just so you know, the one time I was, I did that's, it at a high level. Dude, that's how I would be brought on stage. <laughs> This next this comic guy performs got his all dick over sucked. the place. Yeah, he performed <laughs> in Usher's mouth. <laughs> you might have heard some of his cum on Mike at the Super Bowl halftime show. And uh, allegedly, I'm not saying. No, this is it's just... a weird time for Usher to be involved because he was he's he was cruising. Everyone's like that. That was the it best. It almost feels like there's some sort of Illuminati that's positioning all of these people in this way. It's possible. Pat Williams, he might be onto something, dude. It's possible. The other possibility is that once your name is popular, it's really easy to get a rumor going. You think that's it? It's possible. (laughs) (laughs) You think there's clicks in that? I think there might be some clicks in that, which is the most suspicious thing about P. Diddy being involved because he wasn't like doing much. But no, but I guess he was. It seems like he's iconic. Yes. So it doesn't matter. Like. Whether or not he's relevant, he has staying power as an iconic, powerful right. man in the industry. And he seems like actually did some of... 
I mean, well, theoretically, Audrey. I, don't know, I haven't read one article. I don't Audrey know why. Audrey O'Day that uh, from what is that? Is that Pussycat Dolls or what? A uh, something. Know. She was the girl group that P Diddy had. Uh, she had like been screaming from the hilltops for years. Yeah, that he was a monster, and people were like, "Shut up! Stop! Yeah, yeah no. don't talk about Puff like that. <laughs> yeah, beat it, white lady. Stop trying to take down a great black man." Do you think maybe he changed from Puff Daddy to P. Diddy? Because eventually he was like, you know what, Puff Daddy does sound a little gay. <laughs> Puff da- <laughs> well, that, did you see that Puff video? Puff Daddy and Tucock Shakur. <laughs> Sorry. It's not good. Cut the episode. Yeah. Uh, yeah is, just, I, mean, I don't I think do, I've done well. I do not co-sign that. Yeah. I still want to, I want to cross over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't. He have a he had a reality show where he was like making people oh, starve, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Making people starve. <laughs> no, I said no, making just, people starve. Oh, oh. It was making the band. It was yeah. The the rap group, the girl <laughs> making group. making people like, starve. That's the first hilarious. Buddhist <laughs> game show. Dude, just I would watch a reality a show where people have to like become a monk. That would, that be, would cool. be kind of. I actually it might not be. <laughs> Dude, it's the worst show ever. I take it back. They're just sitting in a room, staring at a wall, not eating all the time. Yeah, it'd be like the Truman Show. Yeah. You'd just gain peace from watching them do nothing. <laughs> it would make you feel better about doing nothing. Yeah. That was like what COVID was. Like when, when it was a lockdown, when everybody was forced to stay inside, there was a peace in knowing that nobody else was also yes. allowed to go it out. It was really nice. Yeah. It was great. It was yeah. like, hey, we're all sick day as yeah. a group. It felt like you and all your friends were grounded at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> and it was awesome. And much like kids getting grounded by the end of it, everyone was like, I'm getting a little fucking pissed off <laughs> yeah. on some shit. I'm going to radicalize yeah. my dad. It was really fun. <clears throat> Those first few weeks were like beautiful. I mean, scary, but like beautiful. I sure. remember it was like we couldn't hang out, but. My friends and I, we would get on Zoom and we would drink every night. We would just play car, like drinking card games on Zoom and we would see each other and we would sleep in and we can't go to the gym, can't yeah. do it. And, and it was so fun for a few days. And then eventually it was like, I'm mad and I'm <laughs> fat and yep. I'm drunk and it's not good. Uh-huh. <laughs> I can track my everyday edible use to March 16th, <laughs> 2020. <Yeah. laughs> that is starting. Do you do edibles day every one, day? Every single day. I am currently on one. But nice. It's like, yeah, but it's like, it's not, I. it's, it's. It's been more as of late, or at least not more. It's I'm actually taking down the milligrams. Uh huh. How I'm, many milligrams? A hundred. But I I was doing too much. I do felt two like, and a half, and I'm like, yeah. whoa. I would love to like be there. I would love to be down to like twenty. Yeah. So I was at like four. Four hundred. Yeah. But the next day, dude, I was like, why am I tired and like? Yeah, bigger? you're on a sedative one hundred percent of the time. You, you get a dart in your neck. Yeah. <laughs> like you're fucking yeah. Just stumbling around. Yeah. So dude. now I'm I'm like I'm on I'm on the process. I'm so is it a down. morning? You a morning edible guy? No, I mean the afternoon. Sometimes for podcasts and stuff like that, I'll do. Yeah, it. I was just like, it's funsy. one. For yeah. Funsy. For a pod, I'll do it. Yeah, for a pod, dude. You know, might as well. We're having fun drinking It is coffee. fun. It yeah, is fun. Not? Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I think if I did it... See, I just don't think it would have a beneficial effect for me to do it podcasting. Sure. Because I would just... Either I would be great or I would be thinking about something different. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Collapsing. You'd be talking, I'd be yourself. like, back to P. Diddy's show. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if they showed everything he did to yeah. make people stars oh, dude. program, throw if that I, on Patreon. If this was mushrooms or something like that, I'd just go really into the darkness. What of do you what think the worst meant? drug to do? Dude, we should do a podcast where we both just do heroin. Yeah, I'll just melt into the microphone. <laughs> yeah. It's not even It would be that. like the first, like, you know how people like, like <clears throat> lo-fi, beats to like study to yes. uh, that would be like the heroin podcast yeah. <laughs> just just you and i just <laughs> you could do an 11 hour episode and people would watch it they'd be like i don't know there's something about these guys vibes it's i wonder just chill. if people would fall asleep to it like it would be their yeah white like, noise. yeah you just be like yeah dude, two guys on you think about yeah banged out <laughs> <laughs> Let us True know white noise, dude. Patreon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll the have Patreon, to put it on app, Patreon. My can and I do heroin. Welcome to the Heroin Podcast, where each week we offer you the most relaxing podcast on the internet. Featuring interviews with guests. Let me get this straight. You're a ditch. How does that make you feel? 
and electric monologues. The Heroin Podcast. Everywhere you find podcasts, like and subscribe so our numbers can shoot up. It just ruins our lives. Yeah, it can't be on YouTube. Another reality show, <laughs> dude. dude tell me how to podcast. We call it. We call it the bounce back. Yeah. Right. Is that the Ben Affleck movie? <laughs> but it's a. Uh, we call it the bounce back, and we get ourselves a la Always Sunny. We get ourselves addicted to a hard drug, but then the challenge is to see how we come out of the hole. Yeah, dude, I like this. I don't mind it either. I kind of like it. It it's would be stakes. fun to do. Yeah, it would be fun to do like a pod, a podcast with one person. You do five episodes. You do a different drug each time, and then yeah. you compare them. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, probably a series. It probably would. Yeah, it might objectively be bad because totally. like the fans would be like, "This cocaine episode is insane." And you'd be like, <laughs> I think it's the best one we've ever fucking done. <laughs> They're off. Are the you blocks. kidding me? <laughs> yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> the Molly one, we're just hugging the yeah, whole time. Yeah, we're just, just like just kind of feeling each other's pants. <laughs> the first episode that I did of this, I had O'Connor and Pope on, and we uh, told the Skank Fest story about him flying to the mountains of Colorado. On, on I still can't. I mean, that is that's outstanding. It was one of the greatest things ever. It's a truly epic, just self move. Like I'm, I hope he's proud of himself yeah. for doing that because nobody else really has that story. He, he was enamored by that Vista. He had to go to uh-huh. Vail. You and I found a Vista of our own that we liked. That oh, I will plug into this episode. That was beautiful. We were looking out over fremont street like the shittiest street in vegas yeah. but the, also not even on we were looking the, the, wrong, part, way. the wrong way wrong like the tail the and shit. we were just like dude are you seeing this shit this fucking view is sick and for like 30 40 minutes we were like this is beautiful I, the reason i yeah. have a photo is because i was like i need to save this and the <laughs> next morning i woke up and i was like what the fuck it turns this? out your phone was all was not on acid, <laughs> but no, we were, yeah, it, yeah. It could not capture the colors, the vibrant. I mean, that was. I, it looked like Disney World. It dude. was beautiful, unreal. It was gorgeous, and who people looking at this right now are not totally gonna understand. But you don't. You're wrong. Yeah. I'm Jesus, and that was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I am Christ. <laughs> don't you lock me away. But uh, yeah, and then walking act- on actual Fremont Street at late at night on at the tail end of an acid trip is like, like a nightmare. Not hell good on earth. Truly, like like weaving through the thriller video. Yeah, <laughs> Just, it's insane. I saw a guy. I mean, they have those circles, those performer circles on that street where people, you know, you can stay in there and then you can get tipped. That's where you're allowed to yeah. busk, busk, I guess. And this one guy, I look. It looked like he didn't know that he could leave it like that. That was a true force field. And he was weaving a basket at about 160 (laughs) miles per hour. Just the fastest weave I've ever seen in my entire life. Just putting together this basket and Sagalo, Brendan Sagalo and I just stood there and kind of, just watched him You're for like, a minute. This is amazing. And then kept going, and we were it's like, like watching a spider weave a web. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that is exact. It was Charlotte's Web. <laughs> yeah, the human. Vegas is the weirdest place to do. Dr- I mean, Hunter S. Thompson encapsulated it perfectly mm-hmm. by being on drugs and yeah. writing Fear and Loathing. But like doing, just being in that place and observing people is just there's something so wrong with it yeah and it's entertaining you get there night one and it's all excitement and it's like this is fucking beautiful uh, anything is possible yeah we're all gonna win and then by the end you're like not only are we losing society is lost these souls are lost well, something is wrong here especially on psychedelics you really get in the weeds of yeah, thinking like, about like old vegas being like man this is just like a perfect example of capitalism. It, it, it they started. <laughs> it it went wrong because of corruption. So they just moved it down the block, and that's eventually going to go wrong. And then they'll move it down the block from that. And, and all like, of that's right, but it's not. Wait, wait, when you go to Vegas, you are supposed to go to Margaritaville and get yeah. a cup that is the same size as you, filled up with enough sugar to kill a diabetic yep. in one sip. And you're supposed to fucking drink that until your brain shuts off, yeah. slam a fucking burger into your face, and just waddle around until you lose money and puke in your hotel room. That's how you're supposed <laughs> to do Vegas. It is, but 
I do think psychedelics have kept me safe in Vegas. Yes. Because I've seen people. Because you've get, seen something, you go, oh, no. That's the thing, dude. I've gone to the nice hotels and, like, you know, walk the actual strip and you go into the Cosmopolitan and all those places, these, like, swanky. And you see people that get obliterated and they're oblivious. And it, like, they're just, like, having a good time, not thinking about the reality. And it's all just confetti and New yeah. Year's Eve. And then you quick scan and you see, like, the dude from the opening scene of The Sixth <laughs> Sense just standing at a column. And you're like, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. <laughs> you're instantly <laughs> taken out. You're like, thank God. God, I'm on acid. That guy's going to poke somebody in the ribs, man. It's terrifying. It's insane, and it only works if you're either just dumb enough to be down and be like, this is our one trip a year, or if you're, like, disgustingly wealthy. Like, I imagine being Vegas when they're just, like, you walk in, they're like, sir, your plane has landed. Do you want your blowjob now or later? And then they they hand you a steak and whatever. You're Dana White and doing your thing. (laughs) Yeah, they're Vegas. That's, like, they might as well go to a different planet. (laughs) Like, I don't, I've never and will never operate on that level. But if you're a comedian who gets recognized once a month (laughs) and hasn't made it yet, it's a weird place to be. <laughs> Sometimes in a bagel store when you're holding your son's hand. Did that happen? <laughs> yeah, it just happened. Were you like, <laughs> your like, father's a star, yeah, young man. I was, like, I was like, you know, typically I don't like taking pictures with my boy, but if you promise to crop him out, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome like, like who's that i'm like, like it's one of these fans yeah, you know, fans of what i'm like nothing <laughs> he paid for that bagel you understand <laughs> yeah. son you appreciate those people the plebes <laughs> that pay for your meal how old is your son four and a half is that uh sorry i was looking to see if just he was we're back talking there about va- yeah because <laughs> i can usually keep a four and a half yeah. year old boy oh. back here no, I have this insane, uh, from that Vegas trip, I have this crazy photo of me with the Chippendales. <laughs> I thought I put it on the bookshelf, but... That's great. I don't think fr- I did. Um, four and a half. Is that, yeah. a, is that a good age? Dude, the whole time has been fucking awesome. I yeah. Lo- I love being a dad. More so than I ever thought I would. Like, I... Yeah, I've... Uh, it's it's the best. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's really fun. How old are Chris's kids? His... Uh, his do- He has a... He- Eight or nine, I think nine year old daughter and then a two year old daughter and a stepson. That's oh, wow. That's okay. Older. Yeah. He's busy. Do you find, yeah, yeah. like, do you find as a parent that it's easier, like, when just when someone else is in the same boat, it's totally. like way easier because, like, your schedules are similar. Your yeah, yeah. Thoughts are similar. Well, I mean, my schedule is not quite as similar as Chris's. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but we relate. A little we relate. more available. Of course. <laughs> I mean, I'm here, ain't I? Yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but we relate on that like base human level where it's like, oh, we get what it's like to have kids. Like, yeah, we understand the, the exhaustion, the the joy, the all that stuff. So, yeah. yeah, it's like it's nice talking on that level. But I also like I don't begrudge anybody for their life choices, man. It works for me. I really love it. I also love being married to who I'm married to. Yeah. I don't know if anybody else should do it. Right. <laughs> you know what I right. mean? Not for me to say. Right. It's like it, a lot of people shouldn't. You should do it if you really want to. But the yeah. idea that like you need to have parents, it's like, yeah, what if they didn't want a kid? That's the worst thing to do is make someone do the hardest thing ever when they didn't want to for do sure. it. For sure. Well, and that's apparently like a large percent. Like it, when I'm on the road, so I'm, my wife and I are trying to have a second kid uh-huh. and we're, you know, I like do crowd work and ask people about it, about what it's like to have multiple kids. And dude, I mean, field study. People hate their children. Dude, they hate their I, children. Dude, at the same, because I'm like, I'm not like close, but we're like yeah. going to, but I'm yeah, like, yeah. should I have a kid? And a lot of people are like, yes. Mm-hmm. But then sometimes people go, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, well, don't do that. And then some people just go, nope. Yep. And I'm like, I realize you're being funny at a comedy right. show, but that didn't come from nowhere. There, there's a difference. There's people where you can tell they're doing the bit and they're like playing with you. Yeah. But then there's people that give you that hard, like almost like a snarl. No, where yeah, you're, you're like, like, oh, shit. Oh, you've <laughs> is like, the kid. OK, well, and that's what I'm saying, where it's it's so funny. It's like, of course, <laughs> everything is fucked up. Nobody loves their children. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny. That's why I'm like, you know, don't, don't, if you want to do it, right, you do. right, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, that does explain that guy in Vegas that's like, oh, yeah. oh he never got any of this. Do you know what made me think of that? Is like that guy, of course, like once you have a kid, you are like, damn, that kid, that's somebody's boy. Yeah. But truly what made me like actually humanize that is my dad and I have had a really bizarre and uh, violent whatever relationship. Really? And we're cool now. We're like, whatever. Uh, we're We're cool. I'll say that. But. Like you the, did the, say that like the way two guys say it after they've physically fought. We have physically yeah. fought. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. But, but you're uh, cool now. But, but we are out cool of, like, now because he's <laughs> like, two gorillas. <laughs> we met in the jungle. We, be we beat our chest. Neither one backed down. And we shook hands after. <laughs> we decided to go back to our bush. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> no, but actually, yeah. It's. It, I mean, it helps that he's like getting older and he's like more of a feeble Yes. Dude, yeah. Now was, it's like, a clear. There's a clear king. It's it's fine. Yeah. But even that, like, I'm just like, yeah, it's yeah. just his testosterone. It's not even mine. Like, right. it's just like, it, thank God. But he's an like, angry man. Yeah. It yeah. seems like boomer shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, uh, but no, I mean, I, I would. You have a unique scenario. For sure. I've never for physically sure. fought. You didn't? No. <laughs> Nobody. No. Not everybody did that. <laughs> but there is a level of like uh man gets older and just is angry now because everything is just like fucking like he had the world by the short and curlies yeah and now he sees the end yeah i get and it it's not it's, great no yeah, it's people it's, facing i don't know how i'm gonna be and, and having no know. tools to deal with it and i think we always <laughs> we always try to every generation tries something different because at the end at the end, you all kind of fizzle out and go, and it's not great. Yeah, and no, so it's ugly. It's once ugly. people see that, they go, I'm going to fix it by not doing this one or two specific things that my parent or the previous generation did. Right. So we can blame their inevitable death on something that we think we can control. Yep. And then we're here being a little weirder, and then it happens to us, and then they'll be like, no, we figure it out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. We're not on Instagram. Yeah. We're not going to be weird old. Yeah. No, it's going to happen. Dude, athletes can't even do that with, like, the death of their career. Yeah. Like, they, they can't even, like, go out the way they want or no. should or, like, anything like that, like, to cement legacy, anything that's the perfect storybook. Like, Michael Jordan, if he had gone out on that made shot and that's it, there's, like, never a question, never nothing, no yeah. blemish wizard's years that kind yeah. of quietly get talked about now because LeBron is old and, you know, unreal. Yeah. So it's, like, it, it, it's weird. Had he just gone out like that, it's even more of a fable. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, that's the best thing you could do for your career. Is of course. Die. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, then people will be like, that guy was fucking. Because yeah. then you you have yeah. untapped potential. That's right. Instead of uh, right. depressing, fizzling reality. That's wow, what a fun right. app, dude. <laughs> See, I look at this as optimistic. Yeah. <laughs> I really do. It makes me feel like so worthless that I want to get after it. You yeah, know what I mean? There is like, something to that where it's like, yeah, when people are like, there is no point, that should mean there's less do pressure. Do what you want. Do what you yeah, want. Like, yeah, all you're not you have is. Submersible. <laughs> go out there. Do something. Get out there, dude. <laughs> we should do the submersible right. <laughs> yeah. I would be into it. For that's what you and Chris should do for a Patreon app is build your own submersible. Uh, Fifty no, thousand Patreon members. Yeah, I <laughs> do think I, I do think there's something em empowering in that, and like mm -hmm. the more you realize that, like, because what's dying is your concept of yourself or who you're supposed to be, not oh, like, dude. You know, I mean, who knows? I may have already should have retired. <laughs> like, like I don't know what the peak is. Uh, maybe Michael Jordan thought he'd you know storybook. The peak even might more. have been getting recognized at the bagel shop I with mean, your that son may this have been morning. It. That may have been it. <laughs> I do think that until you reach an actual cliff, and this is just an optimistic point of view, because if you don't like work hard, it could go away. Yeah. But theoretically, I know comics are always like, "Oh, I've done my best thing," or sure. I think a lot of people feel that way about their life. Maybe yeah. I peaked in whatever, and yeah, it's yeah. like. Unless your skill set is sports, yeah, yeah. Technically, the best thing you've ever done should be coming next because you're acquiring more skills. True, you know. Yeah. So if you actually just get your shit together, which is hard to do unless Marvel casts you in a movie, right, right, right. And you get that fucking trainer going. Well, not to mention, it's like my th my hope. Is that of course, like I reach, you know, it, is that I continue to get better as a comedian. But I want to like, I want to do the best I can for that age, and like do the best hour and material and summation of my life at that time yes so it's like whether or not that's 
going to relate to you that's right. definitely that's going to dictate whether or not it's like Successful. as funny as yeah. some of the stuff i've done previously right but i still want to do as authentic to who i am and what i'm going through at that time and i don't want to necessarily frame it for the gen alphas right you know what i mean which like, i think is really smart because on the one hand there is a inherent possibility of failure because it's like not whatever but I honestly think that the main thing people give a shit about now is authenticity and they can smell it when you're not being the thing people hate the most is someone who's faking it. I mean, dude, the most viral people online right now are retarded. I mean, like it is like my feed is all like specked out. Like kill Tony. Like, no, no, <laughs> I'm my, kidding. Bleep it. Cut it out. <laughs> I've never said anything. Much love. No, like, uh, like a guy with Down syndrome doing parkour, but it has like 25 million views, right. and it's everyone being like crushed that because yeah, yeah. it's genuinely authentic. It's not the best parkour, and it's not even people like. Are you sh- talking about hashtag Hopecore? No, big I don't even know about guy, this. Dude. It's kind of that. It's showing this stuff as inspirational. It's with great. The, like Wonder Years music, you know, twinkling in the background. I'm talking about oh. this person runs the account uh-huh. and they're like, I like peanut butter. And people are oh, like, nice. dude, fucking yeah. And like unironically, like, first of all, you're right. Peanut yeah. butter slaps. Second of all, that is an earnest representation. You didn't hire an editor for that. No, nope. you're just checking in, letting yeah. us know that you think peanut butter slaps. And I think you're beautiful. And I agree. And in a world of peanut allergies, that's kind of a brave thing it's, for you to say. <laughs> yes, it's a Anti cancellation. That's a hard thing. You're going to come with the guy with James Woods? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, authenticity. Like, you, you could, yeah. a thousand social media people could get in a room and they would be like, yeah. that's not going to work. He's just saying he likes grapes, you know? Right, but, right, like, right. If you're just being authentic, well, granted, that's not to say I'm not going to follow. Like I'm, I'm doing real. I'm trying to say TikTok. I think you have a developmental disability, <laughs> and I'm you're going to be just fine. <laughs> There's something cooking back there. As, as long as I can name it, yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah, I can't. I can't just. You know, it's right now. It's just despair. I yeah, <laughs> and that's the name of the special, folks. It's going to be out. Yeah. Despair. <laughs> uh. That's so funny. I'm actually an optimistic guy. Yeah, yeah. I think so. All I right, think good. we're being realistic about things. Yeah. But the takeaway is like, you know, you can, you can't be optimistic by just avoiding stuff that sucks. You have right, to right, confront right. it and, you know. Athlete ab- mindset. Dude. dude. <laughs> Athlete mindset. It's only 10% what happens to us. It's 90% how we react to it, baby. You got to do the work. You got to do put the, in the work. work. There's no shortcuts. There's no shortcuts. There's no shortcuts. If you're not stepping up, then the guy in front of you is not stepping That's up. That's fucking right, dude. Fire me up, dude. <laughs> Run through a wall right now. <laughs> I am a huge Friday Night Lights guy. I sometimes just watch Coach Taylor speeches and like just threaten to punch my wife right I, in head. <laughs> dude, I love it's like because I love sports, but I do think i almost prefer the pageantry surrounding sports than the actual game like the speech the the reality show like i loved uh last chance you did you ever watch oh, it yeah dude. i do as a former junior college basketball player oh so you i'm yeah. watching with tears in yeah. my eyes as if i can relate to any <laughs> of the promise that they had i yeah. stepped on that court and it was clear immediately <laughs> yeah. i did not belong those guys are like they have something to you know hope there's for. a real yeah, but yeah i watch it as like i'm like oh yo my my fellow yeah, all the all athlete. the guys in Last Chance U are at junior college because they have like pro potential, but like they had to murder someone to like <laughs> save their dad's life, you know? And like you're so you're just... junior college because you're fucking white and skinny. <laughs> My dad lost a lot of money in the stock market. That's exactly why I was in fucking junior college. Oh, no wonder he was heated. Yeah. Oh, he so was he oh, so he's yeah, yeah. kind of a crazy. I mean, oh, like, dude, he was an actor that didn't go well. Oh. He, uh, <laughs> he went from from that to stockbroker was OK for for a while then that uh fizzled you know collapsed yeah. all that stuff you know you name it it was uh it was a wild ride and full circle because i we, i talked at the beginning i was like well I, this episode we're certainly just not going to dive into your <laughs> parents and we did it dude we did a full we did a full court app right there look at that um mike thank you so I much didn't, i didn't cry you didn't cry. next time we'll get you back we'll, when we do the heroin pod we'll get some <laughs> tears out of you <laughs> i actually that is the time that i will i'll break yeah yeah well thank you for doing this uh what would you like to plug uh at i am mike cannon on all social media april 6th this is coming out before then 
Yes. Sick. Yeah, absolutely. Sick. Uh, there's just a couple tickets left. Uh, Chris DiStefano's producing it. He's performing on it. So that's the main draw. And uh, I'm where is it? At a stamp in Stamford, Connecticut at New York Comedy Club. Uh, just outside the city, just out, you know, really easy to get to on the train, whatever. Just come out. Incredible. Like comedy.com. Incredible. I'll put links in the description and on the screen and all that. Uh, all right. Thank you so much. Thank you, dude. This is so fun. This was fun. Yeah. Yeah, this was great. All right, folks. Joey Aver here. As I mentioned, we are out front of uh, P. Diddy's house. That was the interview with Mike Cannon. Hope you enjoyed it. But it is time for a news report here at the top of the hour. We are out front of one of uh, P. Diddy's homes, which is currently, is it P. Diddy? Diddy? I don't really know. Is it, uh, we are out front of one of his homes right now as it is being raided. We do not have information at this time, which means we can only engage in wild speculation. Uh, they're in there. They're uncovering a lot. We don't know what it is. We don't know what the angle is. Uh, as far as I have been able to tell, there are only two possible things that are going on. The first is that Diddy is an absolute uh, sex-crazed lunatic piece of shit, and we're going to try not to go through all of the allegations in detail. Uh, a lot of news has covered that, and if you're sensitive to this type of story, you probably just want to move on. Uh, it is possible that he is a piece of shit who has been telling us that his entire life and referring to himself as a bad boy for life and meaning it. Uh, and uh, authorities in there have uncovered a, a moral of the story, which is that maybe you should be a good boy for life. It's possible. The other angle that uh, we are actually o have almost been kicked off the premises trying to discuss uh, does involve our news story from last week where we discussed uh, the conspiracy surrounding Kate Middleton. Uh, that, of course, uh, we do want to apologize. It sounds like she, she does have cancer, but um, I do... I do also want to tell the truth, which is that the reason they finally uh, did release that statement was in response to the reporting that we did break first here on this programming and some of the speculation that we think she may have been the Boeing whistleblower. We believe that forced their hand, uh, but we, uh, we wish her well and uh, we, we think she's doing well uh, during this difficult time. However, that does lead us to the second thing that could be happening here with Diddy's disappearance and the uh, really extreme raid that's been going on at the house. And that is now there's new speculation that Diddy, in fact, was the Boeing whistleblower. And we have a lot of pieces of evidence here. Uh, not surprisingly, what just came out in one of the documents uh, who was just named, but Prince Harry. Uh, the Duke of Sussex or the Duke of Sussex. It kind of depends on whether or not part one or part two is true. Okay, if Diddy was a piece of shit and at these parties, then that could be what Prince Harry was doing, was being an absolute piece of shit scumbag or also just a guy who got invited to a party. But either way, uh, we do think that Diddy's disappearance, the manner in which the United States government is attacking his residences, and of course, the stink of shit from the royal family being involved in this once again does indicate that the only possible path to innocence for Diddy is if he is in fact the Boeing whistleblower and he is being a great American trying to take down uh, a great institution uh, that has really lost its way and you know does a lot of sketchy things with a lot of sketchy defense contractors look I'm not here to speculate but that is what I do here is speculate I don't have answers I just have questions. Again, what are the possibilities? Number one, he's an absolute sex-crazed lunatic piece of shit who used his position of power to put people in compromising situations that they did not deserve to be in, and it is a tale as old as time, and one that we are only finding out happens more and more and more in every sort of community, and it's an absolute disgrace. Or, also potentially, he is the Boeing whistleblower and he's a great American citizen. These are the two paths that I'm hearing inside uh, from our reporters, from also the men doing the raid, these are the only things that I believe uh, are possible. And we're just not going to know the answer to that um, until Bad Boys 4, um, the movie, where uh, I do believe we are going to dive into this and actually find out once and for all. So it's an interesting question. Uh, you know, is there a moral to the story? One, don't be a bad boy for life. Maybe be a good boy for life. Maybe more celebrities should practice self-love, and I mean that literally. Maybe you don't need to fuck your way all, way all the way to the center of the earth. Maybe you've let your excesses get out of hand and that you need to get back in touch with yourself instead of being a scumbag that ruins a lot of other people's lives. That's potential, but also potential, and very potentially. 
He is the Boeing whistleblower, and the royal family stinks like shit. Once again, again, I do want to apologize for our previous reporting, which was mildly inaccurate, but does seem to have kicked both of these things off in motion. I am I using some conjecture here? No more than your average news channel. I think this reporting would hold up on Jesse Waters. I know it would hold up on Alex Jones. I do think these things are connected. So it's something to think about. It's something to discuss. And it's something to meditate on. What do you think happened? That's really all that matters these days in the news, in the news cycle, the way things move. Don't, this is, this is what I really want to get across. Don't wait for information, okay? We make our own information. That's what matters in this day and age. Okay, don't, don't let someone else tell you what's happened. You tell them. You tell them exactly what you think and you don't back off it. Why? Because if you're wrong, you can just keep it moving and it doesn't matter. So our reporting once again at the center of both of these controversies and you know, it's, it's a sad day, but it's an exciting day if we're getting closer to the end of one of these two cases. So again, what are the possibilities here? Number one, don't let anything get out of hand. I know there are a lot of young people listening to this now who are going to be successful, who are going to be powerful, who are going to have the opportunity to copulate their little fucking faces off. And those pe to those people, I say, if you want to do that, you better take down a great American company when they let planes just go down. Okay? So... That's where we are. That is the news of the day. Uh, I wish we had more for you, but I do think we're doing more for you than any of the other news agencies. And uh, I just hope we come to a swift resolution as well. So I am signing off. Hope you have a good night. Good flight. That is this week's Joey Show.